The Yokohama Strategy and Plan of Action for a Safer World, the Hyogo Framework for Action, and the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. Japan, which has experienced numerous disasters, hosted all UN World Conferences on Disaster Risk Reduction that formulated these international frameworks. The Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, formulated in 2015, is an international guideline on disaster risk reduction. It includes specific targets up to 2030 and incorporates knowledge from Japan's disaster experiences. The incorporated knowledge from Japan are the necessity of prior investment in disaster risk reduction, strengthening disaster risk governance to enable central disaster risk reduction agencies to formulate policies and coordinate with other ministries and agencies, and, if a disaster should occur, to learn from it and to build back better. Let's take a look at Japan's knowledge reflected in the Sendai framework and the wisdom arising from that while looking back at history. Earthquakes, tsunami, volcanic eruptions, and typhoons. Japan has experienced countless disasters throughout the course of history and developed a culture of disaster risk reduction. In Japan, many disaster risk reduction initiatives have been undertaken by statesmen. Establishing disaster countermeasures was unavoidable since they needed to obtain popular support to continue governing their regions. A full-scale disaster countermeasure initiated by Shogun Tokugawa Ieyasu in the 17th century to boost growth of the town of Edo, known today as Tokyo, was the Tone River Diversion Works. The Tone River had caused considerable flood damage. This measure, which took 60 years to complete, diverted flow from Edo and Tokyo Bay eastward to Choshi on the Pacific Ocean side. No longer prone to floods from the Tone River, Edo flourished for the next 300 years as the capital city. With reduced flood damage, Edo prospered. However, it still suffered from massive fires and earthquakes that caused severe damage. One particularly large event was the Great Anse Earthquake, a magnitude 7 earthquake with an epicenter in the northern part of Tokyo Bay that occurred on November 11, 1855. It was followed by large-scale fires. 15,000 homes were burned or destroyed, and according to one estimate, more than 7,000 people lost their lives. The government responded promptly, constructing evacuation centers and offering hot meals. Japan's approach to disaster risk reduction germinated in the Edo period. Particularly important were approaches by the government which produced the greatest results. That has continued into modern times, with a move toward government-led creation of a society that is more resilient against disasters. In modern times, disaster risk reduction initiatives have been carried out by preparing legislation and policies. In particular, following the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake, the 1959 Isewan typhoon, the 1995 Great Hanshin Awaji earthquake, 
and the 2011 Great East Japan Earthquake, laws were created to ensure that the same damage would never be repeated. The first turning point was the 1923 Great Kanto Earthquake. More than half of the capital Tokyo was burned to the ground and over 100,000 lives were lost. The main cause was simultaneous fires that erupted from collapsed houses. This led to the inclusion of earthquake-resistant structure calculations and building standards and heightened interest in earthquake resistance. To address fire disasters, areas densely packed with wooden structures underwent land readjustment and fireproofing. The second turning point was the Isewan Typhoon. This typhoon hit the Ki Peninsula on September 26, 1959, with massive damage centered on the southern portion of the city of Nagoya, including 4,697 deaths, 401 missing, and 38,921 injured persons. When this disaster occurred, it was not clear who had authority for disaster correspondence, there were no laws that systematized disaster risk reduction and cooperation between national and regional public bodies was inadequate. A variety of problems resulted, including inadequate communication of typhoon information and insufficient notice to areas in danger, exacerbating damage. This led to enactment of the Basic Act on Disaster Control Measures in 1961. This act vested responsibility for disaster risk reduction in the government, including national and regional public bodies, and specified that it was important to set up a disaster risk reduction system at government level. It led to priority allocation of disaster risk reduction-related budgets. The third turning point came in 1995, with the Great Hanshin Awaji earthquake, which caused enormous damage. The Great Hanshin Awaji earthquake revealed a variety of problems, including a delay in setting up a national emergency response system and delays in collecting and transmitting information due to inadequate coordination between regional public bodies. The collapse of buildings was a particularly significant problem. The earthquake revealed that compared to the minor damage sustained in buildings constructed under the new structural standards of 1981, there was heavy damage to buildings constructed under the old standards. In response, the Act for Promotion of the Seismic Retrofitting of Buildings was enacted to promote seismic retrofitting of buildings constructed under the old standards by using subsidies and loans. While the magnitude 7.3 Great Hanshin Awaji earthquake resulted in total destruction of 11% of buildings the promotion of earthquake-proof retrofitting works saw a dramatic reduction of building collapses in the magnitude 9 Great East Japan earthquake of 2011. Japan has leveraged the lessons learned from each disaster, and the government has led the review of disaster countermeasures. However, despite such diligent efforts, the Great East Japan earthquake that occurred in 2011 caused unparalleled damage, particularly in the Tohoku region. Driven by the Great East Japan earthquake, the Central Disaster Management Council made major revisions to the guidelines for tsunami countermeasures. For relatively frequently occurring tsunami, structures were to be used as defense with provisions to protect human life and assets, stabilize post-disaster economic activity, and even secure manufacturing bases. For tsunami of rarely occurring massive scale, provisions were based on multiple defenses with priority given on saving lives. Japan proactively developed and revised laws even before its post-war period of high economic growth when goods and budgets were still inadequate, working to achieve a disaster resilient society. The various principles that emerged from those experiences were reflected in the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction and have spread globally.
Japan has been developing a disaster resilient society by preparing laws and various measures and implementing disaster risk reduction initiatives. It recognizes the need to disseminate knowledge gained from those experiences and the value of disaster risk reduction around the world and has implemented various projects to share this knowledge. 日本はもちろんその事前防災の取り組みが礎となって持続的なその経済発展であったり今日の,その安定的な経済の状況というのは築かれていると思います。でそういった経験を持っているからこそ今まさにその経済発展真っただ中の国においてそういった経験をしっかり伝えていくということが非常に重要になってくると。Japan has been the host nation to all three past UN World Conferences on disaster risk reduction, seeing it as its responsibility as a disaster prone country and to further contribute to global disaster risk reduction activities. The adopted frameworks have played a significant role as benchmarks for disaster risk reduction initiatives. The Yokohama Strategy and Plan of Action for a Safer World. Was adopted at the first meeting held in Yokohama in 1994. The Hyogo Framework for Action was adopted at the second meeting held in Hyogo Prefecture in 2005. At these two conferences, proposals focused on humanitarian issues such as early warnings and evacuation guidance methods. The third UN World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction, once more hosted by Japan, Was held in 2015 against that background. The venue was in Sendai, one of the areas afflicted by the Great East Japan earthquake. Attended by 185 UN member states, a total of about 150,000 participated, including the public forum. Diverse stakeholders took part, and a considerable input of opinions was made by victims of the Great East Japan earthquake, even from the preliminary stages. And I trust that this framework will be a real serious and concrete guide to the future of how to manage and reduce disaster risk and to contribute to sustainable development. The result was the adoption of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. It reflects numerous proposals born of Japan's experiences. Particular attention was paid to economic damage caused by disasters, issues after the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake and the Thai floods. Humanitarian issues were emphasized in the first and second conference, but greater emphasis was now placed on development issues. An additional goal was added to the Sendai framework, that is, to prevent new and reduce existing disaster risk. Through the implementation of integrated and inclusive measures that prevent and reduce hazard exposure and vulnerability to disaster, increase preparedness for response and recovery, and thus strengthen resilience. Seven global targets were agreed on to support the assessment of global progress in achieving the goal. In February 2017, specific indicators for global targets were set. And countries have commenced measures toward achievement of the goal. For example, under Target E, substantially increase the number of countries with national and local disaster risk reduction strategies by 2020, there is a provision for monitoring and assessing the number of countries that adopt and implement disaster risk reduction strategies in accordance with the Sendai framework. And the proportion of local governments that implement them. Because this target is the first step for national and local governments to gain an understanding of disaster risks, plan for countermeasures, request the required budgets, and implement specific disaster risk reduction measures, this is considered urgent, and 2020 has been set as a target year for achievement. Four specific priorities for action have been set for countries to keep in mind. When pursuing measures toward disaster risk reduction and achieving global targets, let's look at the proposals from Japan that are included within these. One of these is investing in disaster risk reduction for resilience. That is, rather than spend funds on recovery following a disaster, 
invest in both structural and non-structural measures to reduce the risk of and mitigate damage from any disaster occurring in the future, thereby containing economic damage when a disaster does occur and preventing, as much as possible, post-disaster delays in social and economic growth. Research revealed that a $1 prior investment in disaster risk reduction enables a savings of $4 to $7 in disaster recovery. This graph shows economic growth in the absence of a disaster. And this shows economic growth when a disaster occurs without any investment in disaster risk reduction. Making appropriate investment in disaster risk reduction means that even if a disaster does occur, much greater economic growth can be anticipated compared to not having made that investment. This is an important approach. If developing nations, which are currently focused on preparing infrastructure for greater growth, divert a limited budget to prior disaster risk investment, this will lead to efficient and sustainable growth. In Japan, after the 1959 Isewan Typhoon, the national government expanded its disaster risk reduction-related budgetary provisions. Since 1962, Japan has allocated 5 to 8 percent of the fiscal national budget to disaster risk reduction, and through persistent building of infrastructure against disasters, has strengthened the nation's disaster resilience. As a result of such ongoing investment, there was a noticeable drop after 1959 in the number of deaths and missing persons from natural disasters. Separate countermeasures were also implemented for low-frequency major disasters, including early warning systems, evacuation measures and countermeasures against floods exceeding designed levels. What's required to mitigate economic damage is the mainstreaming of disaster risk reduction. The government makes disaster risk reduction a priority policy, introduces the perspective of disaster into all development policies and plans, expands investment in disaster risk reduction, and achieves a disaster-resilient society. Another proposal for the Sendai framework was the principle of build back better. In countries where budgetary constraints make prior investment in risk reduction difficult, the idea here is to use a disaster as an opportunity to create a more disaster-resilient society through disaster risk mitigation measures during the recovery and reconstruction process. It includes a wide range of fields, from infrastructure to the economy, industry, lifestyle, and regional culture. Capability building of national disaster risk reduction organizations is also important. In conjunction with investing in disaster risk reduction and Build Back Better, it is essential to prepare legislation and long-term plans through strong organizational leadership and appropriate budgetary provisions. It is vital to build strong disaster risk reduction organizations commensurate with the circumstances of each nation. Such actions support the disaster management cycle. The Sendai framework constitutes a major trend leading the global direction for disaster risk reduction. Japan has suffered numerous disasters but its know-how and philosophy relating to disaster risk reduction, built up through its long history, is now expanding globally through cooperation with many nations. Even before the Sendai framework was formulated, Japan had been undertaking disaster risk reduction projects in cooperation with various countries in line with the principles contained in the guidelines. Let's look at its track record and current status through examples in Sri Lanka, Thailand, and the Philippines. First, let's look at Sri Lanka. A variety of initiatives are being conducted here under the leadership of the central government. 
Sri Lanka has always faced major disaster risks, including flooding, landslides, and droughts. It is also a country where even greater damage is feared due to the effects of climate change. The tsunami damage from the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake motivated the Sri Lankan government to strengthen its disaster risk reduction measures. However, there are financial constraints, insufficient initiatives for damage mitigation, inadequate coordination and technical capabilities, and an underdeveloped awareness of disaster risk reduction. Even in recent years, it suffered massive torrential rain damage that hit the capital Colombo in May 2016. With the Sri Lankan government, JICA prepared an overview of Sri Lanka's current status and problems and conducted field surveys from 2016 to 2017 with a view to improving its disaster risk reduction system. Several problems were identified as a result. These included inadequate collaboration between related organizations, inadequate disaster risk reduction measures by regional authorities, lack of an integrated database, unplanned land use, and lack of an appropriate early warning system. Based on these survey results, JICA held seminars and group discussions with related local organizations and jointly assembled a disaster risk reduction roadmap setting out how Sri Lanka will engage in disaster risk reduction measures. Focus was placed on the Sendai Framework's four priorities for action and its global targets. The Local Disaster Risk Reduction Plan corresponding to Target E or substantially increase the number of countries with national and local disaster risk reduction strategies by 2020 was set as an urgent task. A range of plans will be formulated by 2020 and subsequently various measures will be carried into effect, targeting achievement by 2030. Concretely, it includes optional investment taking account of overall balance, reinforcing regional disaster risk reduction governance, and creating plans in line with a basin-based disaster risk reduction strategy. This roadmap is assumed to be used as a basis for future revision of Sri Lanka's national disaster risk reduction plans.出来上がったものをロードマップと呼んでるんですけども、結構重要なのはそのプロセスで中央防災機関が指導性を発揮して協議をして決めていくというのが重要ですね。まずは危険は何かを知って、でそれを所要の少ない国家予算をうまくち
ซึ่งมันก็คงจะไม่เป็นเป็นสิ่งที่นอกเหนือจากการก่อสร้างและการติดตั้งระบบกับเรื่องแผนที่จะรับมือเหตุการณ์อุบัติภัยต่างๆเหล่านี้นะครับซึ่งก็ทำให้เรามีการปรับปรุงแผนแล้วก็ทำให้แผนเนี่ยมีความมั่นใจมากขึ้นที่จะรับมือกับเหตุการณ์ในอนาคตต่อไปครับ In the Philippines the initiatives taken were based on the build back better concept Before dawn on November 8 2013 Typhoon Haiyan struck the island of Leyte. Record-breaking storm surge and cyclonic winds caused massive damage to 36 provinces. The death toll and number of missing exceeded 7,000, while economic losses amounted to 39.8 billion pesos, equivalent to 794 million U.S. dollars. Together with offering emergency assistance, such as medical support, to the affected areas. JICA collaborated with the Philippine government to offer advice on recovery planning concepts. Japan had already devised the principle of Build Back Better and encouraged the Philippine government to work with it to achieve this. As a result, this slogan was clearly displayed on the front cover of the Recovery and Reconstruction Planning document. A project to support recovery and reconstruction was launched. And a field survey was conducted with a view to formulating a reconstruction plan. It led to recommendations that included strengthening local disaster risk reduction and management capabilities in the affected areas, stressing the importance of evacuation plans at a community level, and the importance of passing disaster experiences forward, as well as clarifying the organization to maintain a hazard map. Following these activities, various initiatives have commenced at the local municipal level. Typhoon Yolanda の被災地被災地の例えば市長さんそこにいる自治体の職員の皆さんが何て言ったかというとこのような思いをもう二度としたくないとこのような災害から何か学ばないといけないというのを自分たちで私たちに語ってくれたんですね。災害リスクを理解してそれを次の災害が起こる前に。計画に反映させるそれが最も大きな経済なんですか費用対効果をもたらす、えー、活動であるとそれを我々は身をもって体験できた自分たちが作ってきた土地利用計画避難計画のやり方は今後周辺の自治体に伝えていかなきゃいけないそれが自分たちの責務だと。On March 14th, 2015, At a JICA symposium titled Disaster Risk Reduction and International Cooperation, the then Minister for the Philippines Department of Public Works and Highways, Mr. h i l i o s i n s o n g commented on recovery after Typhoon Haiyan. We went immediately into a rebuilding mode using the Build Back Better principle. Instead of just reconstructing the road, we're using the roads in Tacloban, for example. Together with JICA, we're redesigning the road to elevate it and use it as a road dike. So these are some of the measures that really will mean prevention. Countries around the world are sharing the knowledge and technology born from Japan's experiences and developing approaches to disaster risk reduction. JICA will continue to support these countries. Towards steady implementation of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction.